almost 20 minutes after, uh, just before 8 o'clock. Now, former Lesotho Deputy Prime Minister Moteja Metsing has confirmed that he has indeed fled to South Africa where he's uh, reported to be seeking political, as uh, political asylum. Tensions have been building in Lesotho since the recent arrest of the former Defence Minister at Sidi Mukhosi over the killing of a policeman in 2016. So yesterday during a telephonic interview with Intati Metsing, he confirmed that indeed he is here in South Africa after receiving death threats. But you recall that the conversation uh, could not get anywhere due to uh, the bed line that he was in. But he's here with us now in the studio to take this uh, discussion further. And on the line as well, we're joined by um, the current Minister of Public Services in Lesotho, Tisile Masribani. Let's start with Ndate Metzing. Ndate Metzing, good morning to you, Mshampin. Thank you so much for coming through. Good morning. Good morning, ma'am. Thank you so much indeed. As I said, we couldn't really get anywhere with our conversation yesterday due to the bed line. Why are you here? As you have uh, pointed out in your uh, in the beginning, I, there are death threats. I came here really fearing for my life, and this is something that started immediately after the inauguration of this new government. I received some allegations or some threats that uh, there is a plot to have me killed and the plot was going to be executed in one of two ways, either by being arrested and dying in police custody or by assassination. Mm. And after receiving those uh, reports, uh, I think two weeks after the inauguration of government, the security uh, guarding my residence as a former deputy prime minister was withdrawn. And after that, I wrote a letter to the prime minister informing him about the concerns that I'm having and also expressing to him that uh, there are threats here and I'm um, fearing for my life. And now this is also now heightened by the withdrawal of the security at my residence. So did the Prime Minister uh, respond? So I seek, uh, I, I, I sought uh, the uh, audience with him. Prime Minister responded and said that he will, he is considering that issue and he will give me uh, a date of meeting soon. Mm -hmm. He never did that. Last week, Thursday, I once again called him and told him that, no, this thing is, the threats are heightening. Can you give me an audience? He said, no, he is not feeling well, and he is going to be attending a checkup soon. Uh, and after that, he is going to uh, give me an appointment. Mm. As I was not really sure how, which one of these two ways am I going to be, uh, you know, you know, uh, my life is going to be ended. On Sunday, last Sunday, my deputy just called me and told me that, no, uh, he has been called by the police. I asked him to talk to the lawyer before going there, and he talked to the lawyer, and the lawyer advised him to go on Monday, mm -hmm. and he presented himself to the police on Monday. And after presenting himself, just immediately, you know, I think it was around 9, between 9 and 10. And in the afternoon, I received the reports that, you no, know, the former uh, Minister of Defense, who is my deputy, is being tortured. All right. In the Let's just, uh, uh, just hold a thought, Hanyan, in that day, meeting. Let me just bring in that day, Masri um, um, in, in the conversation now. He joins us on the line. That day, Masri how, how do you respond to what in that day, is saying? I mean, the fact that he's been trying to get an appointment with the Prime Minister, his VIP um, security was withdrawn, and his pension funds, benefits as well, um, are not allocated as per the Constitution. How do you respond to all of what he has said? Thank you very much uh, for for asking me the question uh, on the issue of uh, the appointment with the Prime Minister. <coughs> uh, always, 
always, and he knows that as a former prime minister, that always when you seek an appointment with the prime minister, you will, you will have to wait up until you get the appointment. Yeah. The right. prime minister has put such a busy schedule. There is informal cabinet on, man, on, on every Monday. There is a formal cabinet every Tuesday. Every Thursday. He, uh, on Wednesday, he has to see His Majesty. Thursday, the Prime Minister has to appoint uh, uh, ambassadors with, the, with, the, with His Majesty. So the schedule with the issue of the Prime Minister's appointment is too very, very busy. Yeah. He just got married now, and we have consultative meetings preparing, preparing for a national dialogue. The country is preparing itself for a national dialogue. All right, let, let me just come in then, Dr. Masriban. Uh, let, let me just come in because we, we don't have all the time this morning. Did the government, the current administration, not deem this issue important? Uh, more so the issue of the former Deputy Prime Minister's security. And also talk to us about the decision to uh, strip him of all his uh, pension benefits. I, I, I'm coming there, my dear. It, it is very important sometimes to, 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 to talk the truth. I had a telephone conversation with Ndadimeti. He called me and I picked his phone. He said, what should I do? I said in that meeting, please stay calm. There is nothing that is going to happen to you. If he can recall that my telephone conversation with him, I cannot answer for the prime minister, but my telephone conversation with him, we are all surprised. The issue of the arrest of the deputy uh, leader of LCD, he is a citizen of Lesotho. And if the police are looking for me, Mepalesa, as a minister, I have to go to the police station and respond or even give them lead to what they want to investigate. Now, if there is a charge on me, as Cecilia Masaripad, I'll have to find my lawyer. At the moment, as we are talking, the deputy leader of LCD is under custody. And there is nothing to hide because there is a charge that has been laid to him as a citizen of the country. Mm. We are inviting anybody from, it can be Red Cross, it can be Human Rights, it can be any bodyguard, somebody to guard on human rights to come and check on the welfare of the former Minister of uh, Defense. He has been charged legally. Lesotho has to be a country that rules with law. Mm. Rule of law has to be respected. That, that the issue really, uh, of threatening... Hey, Mushampe, because we don't have uh, all the time, as I said, I would want you to hit straight to the point. Let's talk about the issue of the benefits. Is he not entitled, as the former deputy um, prime minister of Lesotho, to his pension uh, benefits, including, of course, the issue of security? Is he not entitled? This is, this is, this is a, an issue of understanding the law. It's not an issue of threatening life for somebody to run away. He's got his own rights. He has taken us to court regarding that issue. What we have been advised as cabinet is that he qualifies for the Members of Parliament Regulations Act 20, 2011 for his pensions. All right. that is but he does not qualify. He does not qualify for the Prime Minister's spouse's uh, 2010 uh, act. All right. L let me just bring he him does here. Not let, qualify let, on yeah, that my one. sincere apologies but because he, I, I have to come himself, in there. Dr. Masin, let me just bring you in, into the conversation yes. because we don't have enough time. Do you not qualify according to the Constitution? No, ma I have served for almost five years. And the laws that he's referring to is saying, in order to qualify, you should have served at least 
36 months, but I've served for more than 50 months. It is really concerning me. If I'm talking about, uh, you know, a threat on my life, this is how a senior government official can take that issue. I have written to the Prime Minister as far back as July, not now. It is now when I'm seeing the incidences which now were happening around last week, this week, that I could see that really now I have to flee and, uh, yeah. for and, my and life. Yesterday but you, this is how they are responding. You, you told us yesterday on the line that in fact there was a convoy of police officers making their way to your house. That is true. Is it? So what in happened? Fact, did it happen? In fact, in fact, no, they did not uh, find me and they did not reach the house because I had already left. In fact, even on the same Monday, after my deputy was uh, arrested, when the tortures now were, were beginning in the custody, they would always take rounds to come to my offices uh, with a, you know, heavily armed in police vans. They will just come and go, you know, trying to, to, to instill that sense of fear. Uh -huh. The reign of terror is there in Lesotho now. It and I'm not the only one. All the political leadership, the opposition, in fact, the way we are seeing it, we are seeing it government using threats to deal with their political opponents. But do you personally feel that this is in a way sort of a revenge? Because what we see happening now is what happened during your administration. I'm not sure really if it is the revenge. I cannot allege that now. But uh, as you can see, really many analysts do feel but that But you do maybe agree that what we see happening now is exactly what happened during your, your previous administration? I don't think that it is exactly what happened because I know, you know, there was only one incident which happened in our administration, the killing of a former... Uh, uh, Dadema Parangomahau. And after that, all the allegations, what I'm talking about now, when I'm talking about a senior... A, a, a citizen of Lesotho who has been a, a former defense minister, being tortured all night long, are, are you being also embarrassed. Linked? Are, are, are you in a happen? way linked to uh, what Ndate no, is being charged no. of, be directly or indirectly? No, no, not at all. Not at all. All right. And Ndate uh, Masiribani, uh, Ndate Metzing says that Ndate Mkhosi has been tortured ever since his incarceration on Monday. Do you know anything? Have you guaranteed his safety for, for peace sake in Lesotho? Maybe, maybe in that meeting was already on his way to South Africa. Or, but what what we know is that even the doctors have certified a good health on the former former minister of defence. So he went to, to 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 the doctors. He was immediately sent to the doctors when he said he was not feeling well. So there is not an issue of torture. That let's put that one aside. I'm coming to the issue of his threat of fleeing. I'm coming to no, get just before you get to that to issue, Dr. Masriban, with all due respect, uh, 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 you, you're not necessarily answering my question. My question to you is, has Dr. Mkhosi, or was he tortured when he was um, taken to police station from Monday? Because this is what Dr. Metsin is saying. No, he was not tortured. Was he not tortured? He has never been tortured. And, and no, Dr. Right? Mkhosi has not been tortured. Hey, let, me L let me bring Dr. Metsin in. When yes. do you get Dr. Uh, he was tortured? Uh, in the morning of, in the morning, we, we received that information. We could not verify it, but in the morning of Tuesday, when the family was there, he asked to be taken to, 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 uh, to the doctor. And now the family asked me to get a doctor of their choice and make an appointment. I talked to the lawyer and we make an appointment to go and see that doctor. But the police never took them to the doctor of the, uh, which was chosen by the family. So you didn't really get to see him? Did uh, anyone see that indeed he was tortured? No, I saw him. You saw him? I saw him, but I'm saying that the doctor that he's talking about, yeah. it, it was not the doctor of the choice All right. of uh, the family. The family chose a doctor, but in state, you know, with impunity, police just ignored that and they took him to their own, ma to their own person. All right, we, we've got to wrap now. Um, yesterday you made mention of the fact that you have written a letter to Sadek. They've not responded so far. So I'm, I think the question is, how, how do you expect Sadek to sort of come in um, here? Okay. Because your previous regime 
had sort of refused to implement the recommendations of SADC saying that uh, Lesotho is an independent country on its own and sovereign. Oh, no, man. Let me... Let, 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 Just let, a quick let one us put the, the record straight. This there were a number of, uh, of SADC uh, recommendations. One of them was that the former commander must be removed. Are you aware that we removed that, even though we did not agree? So I'm saying it will be unfair to say that the former government did not implement. You can say that it did oh. not implement all the recommendations, but we had, we had a plan. Okay. There was a roadmap that we talked about, which was presented to Sadak that oh. on this recommendation, this is how we want it uh, okay. being done. So no response thus far from Sadak? Uh, no, 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 Sadak. Sadak is dealing with the matter. Okay. I think on that one also, I spoke to the, I have always been keeping in touch with the, Executive Secretary of SADC, even on the issue of the democracy, I talked to him okay. and he called Lesotho. Lesotho, they said, no, the, he has been in custody because he, he did not want to uh, cooperate right. with the authorities. While that was not okay. true. No, uh, so Ndatema, SADC really is just, on top of the just issue. Just a quick one to you, Ndatema Sariban. What happens next? Because it looks like the sort of uh, instability from the sense that we get. Can I hear your question again? What, what, what's the way forward in this matter? Ndatema Tsinkien was seated here in South Africa saying that he fears for his life in Lesotho. What is to happen next? No, what, what, what needs to happen is, yes ma'am, what, what, is, what, what is going to happen is that we, 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 we are going to send a delegation to meet with Ndatema and to, to bring him back home safely so that he can be with, with his community uh, he's a leader of his own party. He's a citizen of Lesotho. Our government uh, does not want people to be fleeing away from their own country. All right. We okay. want stability. We, we want the region. We, want, we don't want to be inside Sadak's uh, agenda. All right. So the best thing for us is we want him back home because absolutely I'm with the Minister of Police now and we have checked this thing. There is nobody that is looking for that they may see in such a way that he can flee uh, his own country. All right. No, he needs to let's come leave it back to his children. All right. No, I'm, I'm afraid we've got to leave it at that, but this is a developing story. Of course, we shall be doing a follow-up on this one. Thank you so much to Obafem Pika Bobedi. Time for some music now. Complete. Enjoy. Yeah,